Hello guys, how are you all? I hope everybody is doing fine. So right now, like, uh, how was the experience of this seven days live session? Are you loving it? Are you enjoying it? I hope everybody is able to hear me out. So this is the day five. So I'll just tell you about the agenda of this session. So day five, machine learning algorithms. So the agenda, let me define the agenda, what all things are there. First, we'll understand about ensemble techniques. In this assemble techniques, we are basically going to discuss about what is the difference between bagging and boosting. Second, what we are basically going to discuss about is I think the notes are uploaded in the community session guys let me have a look so if you go to iNeuron.ai and if you probably sign in if you go to your courses here you'll be able to see live community courses everything is available if you go to day three here day four all the discussion and everything is available here right so just go and check it out. Everything will be available here. This is day five, right? Day five. If you go and see in the resources again, everything is available, right? Okay, so uh, the agenda of this session is ensemble techniques, bagging and boosting. Then we are probably going to cover random forest. And then probably we will try to cover Adobe boost. And if I have more energy, I will also try to cover XG boost. Okay, so all these algorithms will discuss about it. Okay, and uh, probably we will try to see what all things will be coming in today's session with respect to this but i hope everybody is able to hear me now okay and uh, yes hit the like button i can see 300 people joining but no likes why okay so uh, how was the previous session i think it was quite amazing and uh, you are able to learn properly you are able to understand properly yes i may probably come up with uh, Django also so let's see I will uh, put up a vote uh, next week and uh, Yeah, now we will try to see what all things can be covered like Django flask Okay Specifically related to EDA deep learning Okay, so we will try to make this session right now. We have basically start started started stats and ML probably in the future we may also have NLP okay so all these things uh, but I'll take a break of around three to four days because I need to travel okay and uh, yes that's it just a quick announcement for everyone uh, regarding one neuron platform everybody please listen to me on this platform one neuron platform the platform has got matured now we are having more than 100 plus courses and in a month we are trying to upload 20 courses right now the price is 7080 rupees INR for lifetime okay so this lifetime you will be able to see you can also use 10% discount by writing krish10 as coupon code you can use krish10 and probably from from one month from now mostly till march 31st i guess this offer will be there only till march 31st 
because till march 30 31st uh, probably in just some days we are also coming up with live sessions live sessions inside one neuron okay so live session is also getting integrated probably from feb second week or third week i think feb fourth week okay so after march 31st this price is going to become 20k inr based on subscription basis subscription basically means we are coming up with one year three year five year plans so utilize this opportunity guys later on it will not be in my control to give you at this particular price because i am not the decision maker in ineuron with respect to prices so business decision has come up with this because at that point of time we will be having 200 plus courses with doubt clearing session live classes and all the things so it is a request please utilize this opportunity and take up one neuron otherwise nothing is in my hand okay and at that point of time you don't scold me krish you did this you increase the price i did not do anything okay so you will be able to see this 20k inr the price is going to become 20k inr this has been decided by the investors plus the business heads over here okay and uh, probably you will not be able to get it in 7080 and not specifically for lifetime this will become one year three year five year subscription plan so again it's a request take it otherwise it's up to you okay this 20k will be only for one year three years like one year plan will be 20k three years it will become a little bit more costly and five year plan we are just coming up with this three plans 7080 right now is there for lifetime mostly after march 31st we will not have that specific option because the platform will become completely matured okay so it is up to you now go ahead take it don't scold me later on you cannot scold me because i tried to extend the offer till whatever thing was possible from me now it is up to you take ahead otherwise if later on if you want to go with high money then not my choice okay so for the people who have bought now it's pretty much amazing they are enjoying the lifetime thing they can give their kids and go <laughs> because you obviously you're not going to you know be in this earth for 100 years okay okay so let's go ahead and let's start the topics Richard, the first topic that we are going to discuss is about ensemble techniques now what exactly is ensemble techniques and we are going to discuss about it okay shubham ji Okay, guys. So let's continue. Okay, guys. So yeah, all Rohit, all courses are at seven zero eight zero. Okay. Now it is up to you. Go ahead and take it. Utilize this opportunity. You cannot tell me anything because I try to tell the my entire team members to extend for some amount of time later on. because now we are having we will probably be having 100 plus people in our company also so we also have to look on to that so ensemble techniques what exactly is ensemble techniques till now so guys everybody ready guys you can find out all the information in the description regarding one neuron and all all the numbers also i have given in the description okay so uh, till now uh, are we ready guys should we go ahead yes big data spark all the courses are available there cloud is there everything is there okay okay guys so shall we go ahead 
shall we go ahead everyone ready 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 yes certification will also be given in that already certification is also given i will just show you if you want okay how the iron platform looks like now now we are trying to add up lot of options so if you go and see over here if you go in my courses so this is how many options we have come up one neuron this is the entire one neuron platform you can see all the courses here we have included almost everything and still requests are actually going to come up and uh, if you see we have also added options to you can see the what's next in the february month this all courses are going to come in february this all courses are going to come in march this all courses are going to come uh, modules this all are going to come so everything is given over here and we are also about to announce challenge for one neuron people okay so i will close it now now let's go ahead uh, with ensemble techniques till now we have solved two different kind of problem statement one is classification and regression okay and you have learned about different different algorithms like uh, linear regression logistic regression we have discussed about knn we have discussed about uh, yesterday what discuss, what did we discuss our name bias different different algorithms we have already finished okay now with respect to classification regression problem whatever algorithm we are discussing there was only one algorithm at a time we were discussing right one algorithm at a time we are discussing and we are trying to either solve a classification or a regression problem okay till now we have learnt in this particular way okay now the next thing is over here is that can we use multiple algorithms multiple algorithms uh, multi multiple algorithms to solve a problem okay multiple algorithms basically means can we i'll just talk about it okay now in uh, the if i ask this specific question can we use multiple algorithms to solve a problem okay at that point of time i will definitely say yes we can because we are going to use something called as ensemble techniques there okay now what this ensemble techniques is okay so ensemble techniques in ensemble techniques we specifically use two different ways two different ways one is one way is that we specifically use and the other one i'll just go to write it over here so one that we basically use is something called as bagging technique and the other one we specifically use is something called as boosting technique okay so in bagging technique in bagging technique we what exactly we can do and in boosting technique what we can actually do and how we are combining multiple models to solve a problem okay so let's first of all discuss about bagging now how does bagging work okay how does bagging work we'll try to discuss it over here let's say that i have a specific data set so this is my data set with uh, with features rows columns everything like this i have this specific data set okay just imagine i have many many features over here like this f1 f2 f3 and probably i have my output so this is my data set d let's consider it okay now what we do in bagging is that we create models and this model can be anything it can be logistic it can be linear for a classification problem let's say that this is logistic model so this is my model m1 let's say i have another model m2 then i may have another model m3 okay i may have m4 tell me what all model we discussed with respect to classification till now with respect to classification i am just considering classification as an example what all model we discussed let's say that this is logistic okay and this is probably the other model which is like decision tree okay and then probably we use this model as uh, knn classification okay and this model can again be decision tree it's fine let's use another decision tree okay so now here you can see that we have used so many models okay so many models are there now with respect to this particular model what i will do is that the first step that i will do from this particular data set i will just take up some rows so i'll basically do row sampling and i'll take a row sampling of d dash d dash basically means this d dash is always less than d 
sum of the rows i'll push it to m1 okay okay i can also use name bar it's fine okay so what i'll do is that sum of the rows i'll push it to model 1 this model 1 will be training okay let's say that for out of this 10000 record 1000 rows i'm actually doing a row sampling of 1000 rows and giving it to m1 to train it then what i'm actually going to do over here i'm basically going to give this specific model m2 and again i'm going to do row row sampling and i'm again going to sample some of the rows and give it to model 2 and again remember some of the rows may get repeated from this d dash to next d double dash okay similarly i will do row sampling and give it to this and again i may have d triple dash and d four dash so different 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 rows data points when i say row sampling basically i'm talking about data points different different data points i will give it to separate separate model and this model will specifically train when i say d dash that basically means uh, suppose I say 10,000 are my total number of data points. When I say D dash, this D dash may be 1000 points. Then D double dash may be another 1000 points and some of the rows may get repeated over here. D triple dash, here also I can basically use. So here specifically row sampling will be used. Okay. I'll talk about column sampling also, Santosh. Uh, column sampling will specifically happen in um, random forest, which I'm going to discuss about it. Now, when I have this many spe specific stuffs, each and every model will be trained with different kind of data. Now, how the inferencing will happen for the test data? Okay. How the inferencing will happen with test data? Okay. So, first thing first, let's say that I'm going to get a new test data over here. Now, new test data will be passed to M1. Okay. Will be passed to M1. And this M1, suppose it gives 0 as my output. Suppose let's say that I'm doing a binary classification okay it gives a zero as an output so this is my output of zero next m2 for the new test data gives one m3 gives one and m4 also gives one as the output now in this particular case in this particular case what will happen now you can see over here it's simple what what do you think the output may be in this particular case now m1 has predicted for this particular test data as zero the model m2 has predicted one M3 has predicted 1 and M4 has predicted 1. So finally, all these outputs are going to get aggregated. Are going to get aggregated and a simple thing that gets applied is majority voting. Okay. Majority voting. So tell me what will be the output for, with respect to this. The output will obviously be 1 because the majority voting that you can see, 3 people are basically saying it as 1. So my output over here will be 1 okay will be one so this is the concept of bagging okay this is the concept of bagging wherein you are providing different different rows with probably all the features in this case and giving it to different different model again which is a classification model and then finally you are combining them based on majority voting and you are getting the answer as one okay so this step is called as bootstrap aggregator bootstrap aggregator that basically means you are aggregating all the output that it is basically coming from all the specific models okay all the specific models now many people will say krish what about tai tai mein kya karenge guys like this kind of situation you know we will be having more than 100 to 200 models so it is very very difficult that it will be a tai okay okay who are repeating questions they will be put up in timeout okay so what if you are saying that if the 50 percentage of model says yes 50 percentage of model says no always understand guys we will be having more than 100 to 200 plus models okay so in this particular case there will be high probability that always there will be a majority voting available okay it will always not be in that specific scenario okay so this was the concept about bagging now some people will be saying that krish why are you using different different models guys i'm not discussing about random forest over here random forest uses only one type of model that is decision tree but if we think <coughs> as a concept of bagging you can have different different models over here and you can basically combine them okay so this is a technique of ensemble techniques and this is basically called as bagging
okay no diksha we don't use uh, one algorithm we can use multiple different algorithms in bagging okay when we say custom ensemble techniques we can use definitely different different models now i hope everybody is able to understand this i hope everybody is able to understand can i get a quick yes along with likes likes are very less why today hmm okay go ahead tell me i hope everybody is able to understand it right i hope everybody is able to understand it right okay perfect so let me go ahead with the next one okay okay now tell me one point i missed out fine this is with respect to the classification problem with respect to the regression problem what will happen with respect to the regression problem what will happen over here what will be my output in this particular scenario in the case of a regression problem in case of a regression problem let's say that i got here 120 here 140 here 122 here 148 as my output so in regression what will happen is that the entire mean will be taken mean will be taken the output mean will be basically taken and that will be your output of the model okay average or mean very simple right okay so average or mean will be basically taken up and here based on the average you will be able to solve the regression problem great now let's go ahead and try to understand with respect to bagging and boosting how many different types of algorithm are there but before that i need to make you understand what exactly is boosting now here in bagging you have seen that you have parallel models right one 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 independent you have parallel models you are giving some row samples in different different models and basically you are able to find out the output okay now in case of boosting boosting is a sequential combination of models like this you have lot of sequential models like this and one after the model like first i'll give my training data to this particular model then it will go to this dot data then this model then this model so this will be my m1 m2 m3 m4 and finally i will be getting my output so here you can basically say that boosting is all about and this m1 m2 m3 we basically mention it as weak learners so this will be weak learner weak learner weak learner weak learner and finally when we go till here it it will if i combine all these weak learners weak learner weak learner okay once i combine all this weak learner it becomes a it becomes a it becomes a strong learner okay finally if i try to combine this this will basically become a strong learner okay so here you have all the models sequentially one after the other and then you will probably try to provide your uh, input from one model to the next model to the next model and these all models will be a very simpler weak learner model which will not be able to predict properly but when you combine all this particular models together sequentially it becomes a strong learner how this specifically works i'll take an example of ada boost xg boost i will show you that okay weak learner basically means the prediction is very bad okay for those models but as you go sequentially you combine them they become a strong learner okay one example i want to give you let's say that let's say that you are a data scientist right let's say that this model 1 may be a teacher with respect to physics okay then this model 2 may be a teacher with respect to chemistry okay let's say model 3 is basically a teacher of maths and model 4 is a teacher of geography okay now suppose if you are trying to solve one problem obviously if the physics teacher is not able to solve that particular problem then probably chemistry can help or maths can help or geography can help or someone can help so when we combine this many expertise together they will be able to give you the output in an efficient way okay so i hope everybody is able to understand sumit i'll talk about it where whether all the features are basically passed to all the models or not i'll just talk about it just give me some time okay but i just want to give you an idea about in short if someone ask you in an interview 
what exactly is boosting okay boosting is you can just say that it is a sequential set of all the models combined together and these all models that are initialized are usually weak learners and when they are combined together they become a strong learner and based on the strong learner they give an amazing output and right now if i say in most of the kaggle competition they use different types of boosting or bagging techniques okay so i hope everybody is able to understand till here okay and uh, i will show you with all these examples so combine okay don't worry i will show you i'll show you an example okay don't worry people don't worry i will show you by solving some examples i will when i'm discussing about random forest and all so you'll understand so we have basically as i said bagging and boosting in bagging what kind of algorithm we specifically use we use something called as random forest classifier and the second model that we specifically use is something called as random forest regressor so we specifically use these two kind of models which i'm actually going to discuss right now after this and then in boosting we basically use techniques like ada boost gradient boost number 3 is extreme gradient boost which we also say it as xg boost extreme gradient boost so all these things we will try to cover let's say whether we will be uh, able to complete it today or not but let's say i'll try my level best whatever is trying to get completed because uh, again i have to go slow i don't know how many people are learning for the first time and all and how they will be following so based on that i will try to teach it little bit slow whatever things gets completed today it's fine otherwise tomorrow the remaining part will get completed so let's go ahead and let's discuss about the first algorithm which is called as a random forest random forest classifier and regressor okay now first thing first let's understand some things from the yesterday's class i hope uh, what is the main problem with respect to decision tree what is the main problem of decision tree let's say i have this particular question for you i hope everybody remembers decision tree from yesterday's session whenever we create a decision tree without any hyperparameter does it not lead to overfitting does it not lead to overfitting tell me yes okay does it not lead to overfitting uh, whenever you probably have a decision tree right it leads to something like overfitting why overfitting because it completely splits all the feature till its complete depth okay now during this scenario overfitting basically means what we discussed right overfitting basically means for training data the accuracy is high for test data the accuracy is low okay so training data when the accuracy is high i may basically say it as high bias okay and then i may basically say it as sorry not high bias low bias and high variance low bias and high variance okay so low bias and high variance yes obviously we can do pruning and all guys but again understand pruning is an extensive task probably if you are if you have 100 features if you have data points which is like 1 million to do pruning also it is very much difficult yes pre pruning can be done but again we cannot confirm that it may work well or not okay so right now with respect to decision tree you have this specific problem that is low bias and high variance okay now in low bias and high variance so you know that my model is basically the generalized model that i should get it should have low bias and low variance so if somebody ask you why do you use random forest you can basically explain about decision trees like this now my main aim is to convert this high variance to low variance now i will be able to convert this high variance to low variance using random forest classifier or random forest regressor now what does random forest do random forest is a bagging technique similarly i have a data set over here let's say that i have this data set okay and then 
here I will be having multiple models like M1, M2, M3, M4. Let's say I have this four models like this will have many, many models. Okay. Okay. Now, with respect to this models, this models, all the models are actually decision tree in random forest. All are decision trees. You don't have a different model over there. Okay. So, over here, you can see that all the models are decision trees that is going to get used in random forest. Okay. So, decision trees always gets used in random forest. The first thing that you should know. Now, whenever we are using decision trees, you know that decision tree, if I by default, if we try to create it, it may lead to overfitting. And because of that, every decision tree will basically create low, low bias and high variance. But if we combine in the form of bootstrap aggregator, this high variance will be getting converted to low variance. Because why? Because majority of voting we will be taking from this particular decision trees. Like there will be many many decision tree so they lot of outputs will be coming and with the help of majority voting classifier this high variance will get converted to low variance now in random forest how it works in the first case if i talk about random forest over here two things basically happen with respect to the d dash data set let's say in first model we do some kind of row sampling plus feature feature sampling that basically means we have to select some set of rows and some set of features and give it to M1. Similarly, you do row sampling and feature sampling and give it to M2. Then you do row sampling and feature sampling, you give it to M3. And then you do row sampling and feature sampling, you give it to M4. Okay. Now, when you do this, so what will happen independently, you are giving some features along with some rows. Now, there may be a situation that your features may also get repeated okay it may also get repeated your records or data points may also get repeated okay so when you are probably training your model with this specific data sets and specific features this model become expert in predicting something right as i said one example over here i'm giving a physics model some data i'm giving chemistry data chemistry model with some data similarly here i'm giving some information to some model so the model will be an expert with respect to that specific data so based on all this particular data, whenever I get a new test data, so what will happen? Suppose let's say that this is a classification problem. The M1 model will be predicting zero. This will be predicting one. This will be predicting zero and this will be predicting zero. Now in this particular case, again, the majority voting classifier or majority voting will happen in the case of classification problem. And then here you will be specifically able to get the output as zero. Okay. So I hope everybody is able to understand all the models over here are decision trees and based on that you will be doing see when I'm in an interview you should be very very uh, things the things that I'm telling you over here is all all the points are very much important and similarly if you tell the interviewer definitely your interview is cracked in this kind of algorithm. I've seen some of my students saying that okay uh, Krish, um, uh, when the interviewer asked me that which is my favorite algorithm, I said random forest. I told why did you say like that? Because he said that because that person let me let him ask any questions in random forest. I'm very much confident about it. And I'm also going to prove him, you know, why they are very, very good. Okay. So with this specific case here, you can basically see that because of the overfitting condition of the decision tree, you're combining multiple decision tree so that you get a generalized model which has low bias and low variance okay so i hope everybody is able to understand boost feature sampling basically means suppose if i have one two three four feature for the first model i may give two features for the second model i may get three features okay for the fourth model i may give four features or uh, any one feature also i can give to a specific model so internally that random forest it takes care of okay so over here, these things are there and this is how random forest works. Only the difference between random forest classifier and regression is that in regression, again, whatever output you are basically getting, you basically do the mean. That's it. Average. You just do the average, you'll be able to get the output. Okay. Based on all the models output that you are actually getting. Okay. 
Now let's talk about some of the important points in random forest. Random forest, the first thing, first question is that, is normalization required in random forest? Is normalization required in random forest? The answer, what it is, you tell me. Then the next question is that, in KNN, is normalization, when I say normalization or standardization, I'll, I'll just talk about standardization. Is standardization is required? So this will be my another question. So is normalization required in random forest or decision tree? You here you can also say it as decision tree. Is it required? Okay. So for this, the answer will be no. Because understand decision tree will basically do the splits, right? If you minimize the data also, that split won't be that much important. But if I talk about KNN, either standardization normalization required over here the answer is yes because here we use two things one is euclidean distance and manhattan distance okay manhattan distance because of this you definitely have to you apply standardization so that the computation or distance becomes easy okay so this is one of the most common interview questions that is basically asked in random forest coming to the third question is random forest impacted by outliers is random forest impacted by outliers tell me okay tell me the answer everyone what should be the answer for this is random forest um impacted by the outliers okay over here over here the answer will be no just check it out okay why check it out from your side i've already uploaded a video on this also check it out outside basically means google and check it out check it out in google okay okay perfect so i hope i've covered most of the things in random forest now the reason I did not discuss about decision tree, how the decision tree is constructed, how entropy is used, how uh, guinea is used, everything I have discussed yesterday. So that is the reason why I am directly taking like this. So I hope you have enjoyed the session till now. Okay. So one thing is that because it gives equal opportunity to all the features by selecting randomly. Perfect. Yes, sir, Z score and standard scalar is same. Yes, for standardization process, you use Z score. Okay. So, everybody clear with random forest and regressor? I hope you like this session till now. Okay. That is for outliers because it gives an equal opportunity to all the features by selecting randomly, right? So, because of that. Is random forest impacted by outliers? This is the third question. Okay. Is KNN impacted by outliers? Is this KNN algorithm impacted by outliers? Outliers. So what should be your answer? What should be your answer? Is it impacted by outliers? Is KNN impacted by outliers? The answer is yes. Big yes. Okay, I've also shown you this specific part also. Okay, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I think. Okay, perfect. So, these all are the interview questions that needs to be covered. Now, let's go ahead and discuss about ADA Boost. The second one. Now, in bagging, most of the time we specifically use random forest. Random forest. Okay. Or you can also create custom bagging techniques okay custom bagging techniques means whatever algorithm you want use the combination of them and try to give the output okay try to give the output this also you can do it manually with the help of hands okay perfect so let's go today we are we are going to do, just give me a second guys
ओके गाइस सो आई होप एवरीबडी इज क्लियर टिल हियर ओके गाइस सो सेकेंड थिंग वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इज बूस्टिंग टेक्निक इन दिस द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट फर्स्ट एल्गोरिथम दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इज अडा बूस्ट ओके सो अडा बूस्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ डज अडा बूस्ट वर्क but till here uh, did you understand nicely everyone is it interesting or not anjan uh, customize bagging techniques take the data set take apply a sampling code give only those data set to your one model right a simple sampling techniques can actually help you understand all those things yeah perfect perfectos ah uh, we will solve a problem with respect to ada boost just give me a second just a second give me a second i'm just trying to open my notebook okay now let's solve uh, the first boosting technique which is called as ada boost okay and uh, this is a boosting technique uh, in the boosting technique you have heard that we have to basically solve in a sequential way okay this at least you know i know there is a lot of confusion within you all but we'll try to solve a problem let's say okay so suppose i have a data set which looks like this f1 f2 f3 f4 so these are my features and probably these are my output okay so let's say that i am having this features like this and this is my output like yes or no like this okay so let's say that how many records i have over here 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 
So what we do over here specifically, we will create a decision tree by taking only one feature and we will only divide it to one level. Okay, one level or one depth. That's it. And this is specifically called as stump. Okay. I hope everybody is able to understand till here. Yes. Quickly tell me. I hope everybody is able to understand till here. Now, what we are going to do next is that from this particular stump, okay, this stump is basically getting created. Only one. So that is Ada Boost, right? We say it as weak learners because this is weak learner. Okay. Weak learner. Why the, there is a reason we say this as weak learner. Okay. So only weak learner. So that is the first thing with respect to uh, this particular Ada Boost. Okay. So the first step is that this is a weak learner. So for the weak learner, we basically create a stump. Stump basically means one level decision tree. That's it. Okay. Based on the information gain and entropy, I have selected the feature and then I just made a decision tree with only one level. Okay. Why it is called as? It is called as weak learner. Okay. So that is the reason we use only stump. That is just a one level decision tree. Now the next step happens is that we provide all these specific records to this F1 and we train this specific model. Okay. Only with one level decision tree, we train them. Now, after we train them, let's say that we are going to pass all these particular records to find out how many are correct and how many are wrong. This decision, this decision tree is basically giving. Okay. So let's say that out of this entire records, one record, one record was just given as wrong. Only one record this specific learner gave as wrong. Let's say that this is the, this is the record which was given as wrong. Okay. I'll not say this or this. Okay, so let's say that this record output was predicted wrong from this particular model. Only one wrong was there after training the model. Now, what we need to do in this specific case, understand a very important thing is that what we need to do after this. Okay, so let's say that we have done this and probably after this, what we are actually going to do, we are going to calculate the total error. Okay, so how many error this particular model made? Let's say that in this particular case, only one was wrong. So this was only wrong, right? One was wrong. So if I want to calculate the total error, how will I calculate how many, how many of them are wrong? How many of them are wrong? Only one is wrong. What is the weight of this? So I will go and write one by seven. So this is specifically my total error out of this specific model, which is my stump over here. Okay. Which is my F1 stump. Everybody clear till here? Just give me a confirmation. Now, this is my first step. The second step is that I need to see the performance of stump. Performance of stump. Which stump? This specific stump. And the performance is basically checked by a formula which is 1 by log E, 1 minus total error divided by total error. Okay. Why we are doing this? Everything will make sense. Okay. In just time, every every in just a small time everything will make sense the first step that we do in ada boost is that we try to find out the total error the second step we try to find out the performance of stump now in this particular case it will be 1 by log e 1 minus 1 by 7 divided by 1 by 7 so once i calculate it it will be coming as 0.895 you do it you do the calculation and just let me know okay I'll give you time to write it down because this is a little bit difficult. Okay. F2 and F3, see, again, understand out of all these features, I found out from information gain and entropy that this is the best feature. Okay. So, let's say that I have calculated this as 0.895. So, this is my second step. The first step is find out the total error. The second step is performance of stump. So I hope everybody is able to understand till here. Can I get a quick like so that at least the like crosses 500? So the like should cross at least 500 now. Come on, yeah, I'm I'm putting so much of effort. You should also put some effort, right? What is TE? TE basically means total error. 
टी बेसिकली मीन्स टोटल एरर ओके ओके फाइन नाउ एवरीबडी इज क्लियर टिल हियर एवरीबडी इज क्लियर टिल हियर ओके एवरीबडी इज क्लियर टिल हियर आई होप एवरीबडी इज गॉट दिस ओके पॉइंट एट नाइन फाइव ओके नाउ सी सी द स्टेप्स ओके सी द स्टेप्स अंडरस्टैंड वेन एवर आई एम डिस्कसिंग अबाउट बूस्टिंग आई एम गोइंग टू कंबाइन वीक लर्नर्स टूगेदर टू गेट अ स्ट्रॉन्ग लर्नर नाउ वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप आउट ऑफ दिस नाउ what what will be my third step understand over here my third step will be to update all these weights to update all these weights and that is the reason why i am calculating this total error and performance of step so my third step will basically be new sample weight from the decision tree 1 which is my stump so i'll say new sample weight is equal to i need to update all these weights why me i need to update all these weights again understand i'll i'll talk about it just a second so if i want to update the sample weights first update i will do it for correct records see for correct records whichever are correct like these all records are correct these all records are correct you know these all records are correct now when i update the weights of this way uh, update the weights of this particular record it should reduce it should reduce okay and when the 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 wrong records that i have this update should increase why because because if i increase this weights then the wrong records that are there that record should go to the next week learner okay that is the reason why i am doing it now how to update this particular uh, weights for correct records for correct records the formula looks something like this weight multiplied by just a second let me check out the okay weight multiplied by e to the power of minus this specific performance okay this specific performance so e to the power of p s i'll write performance of stump and then i will basically be able to write 1 by 7 multiplied by e to the power of minus 0.895 if i do the calculation everybody try to do it the answer will be 0.05 okay now this is for correct records what about incorrect records for the incorrect records the the weights that is going to the formula that we are going to apply is multiplied by e to the power of plus ps not minus ps plus ps so here i'll write 1 by 7 multiplied by e to the power of e to the power of 0.895 so if i go and probably calculate this i'm going to get it as 0.349 so this two are the weights that i have got that basically means all these records now which are correct 1 by 7 the new updated weights will be 0.05 0.05 0.05 sorry not for the wrong records then this will be 0.05 then 0.05 and 0.05 okay so let me just see what is 1 by 7 1 by 7 so here you can see initially it was 0.142 now it has got reduced to 0.05 because all these records are correct okay but the wrong record value is 0.349 so my weights will now become over here as 0.349 everybody clear till here just give me a quick yes if it is you got it or not till here okay okay now i will just go and go ahead and write over here my new weight my new weight is nothing but 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
okay how many records are there one two three four five six seven so my fourth record will basically become the new value that i'm having is something called as 0.349 okay so 0.349 now tell me guys if i do the summation of all these weights is this is it one is it the summation one is the sum summation one everyone tell me is the summation one is the summation one is it one so probably no i don't think so it is one because if i try to add it up it is not one but if i go and see over here these all are one okay if i combine all this thing one two three four five six seven eight, these all are one so here i have need to find out my normalized weight now in order to find out the normalized weight all i have to do is that what i have to do for finding out the normalized weight tell me think of it what i have to find it out with respect to the normalized weight in order to find out the normalized weight think over it guys what we have to do because the entire summation should be one so we have to normalize okay we have to basically normalize okay now in order to normalize all you have to do is that go and find out what is the sum of all these things the summation of all these things will be 0 0.649. All you have to do is that divide all the numbers by 0.649. Divide it by 0 0.649. 0 0.649. Like this, divide all the numbers by 0.649 and tell me what will be the answer that you will be getting. So here your normalized weight will now look like 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.07 and this value will be somewhere around... Uh, 0.537 i guess in this case then this will be 0 0.07 0 0.07 0 0.07 okay so this is basically a normalized weight just let me know whether you are getting this thing or not yes i hope everybody is able to understand yeah Here we are going to divide by all this 0.649. Okay. Now this is my normalized weight. Now after you get a normalized weight, we will try to create something called as buckets. Because see, one decision tree we have already created, which is a stump, right? Which is a stump. And you know from this particular stump what you are going to get, okay, as an output. Then in the sequential model, we will go and combine another model over here, right? Now it's the time that I have to create this specific model. Okay. Now in order to create this specific model, I need to provide some specific rows only to this model to train because this model is giving one wrong. Now what I have to do is that whatever is wrong along with other data points, I need to provide this specific model with those records so that this model will be able to train on this and probably be able to get the output. Okay. Here sum is not, uh, then probably I have done the division wrong. Let's see. 0 0.01, 1.5, 2, 0 0.25, 3, uh, 0.649. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me open the, it will be, it'll be approximately equal to guys, 1. This will be approximately equal to 1. Don't worry. I am, I am missing some decimals. Otherwise, it will become 1 only. See. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.649. It is 0 0.77. 0 0.077. Okay. So if I take 77, come on, guys. Common sense. Okay. Common sense. Now let's create buckets. Now, based on buckets, how the buckets will be created over here, I will take 0 
and till sorry uh, whatever is the value over here normal weight value okay so i will start creating my buckets buckets basically from 0 to 0 0.07 okay see what did i say now for this decision tree or stump i need to provide some records so the maximum number of records that should be going should be the wrong records that should go over here now how do we decide that okay there should be a way that we should be able to say that that specific wrong number of records should go to that decision tree so for that purpose what we do is that this decision tree will randomly create some numbers randomly create some numbers some numbers between 0 to 1 okay randomly create those numbers between 0 to 1 and whichever bucket it will come in like 0 7 to 0 1 4 okay 0 1 4 to 0 7 basically means 0 2 1 okay then 0 2 1 2 see how the bucket is getting created this value is getting added to this so that becomes this bucket okay 0 2 1 plus 0 0.3537 how much it is 0 2 1 0.537 it is nothing but 470 0.747 okay then 0.747 to 0.751 like this you create all the buckets okay you can create all the buckets now tell me which record is basically having the biggest bucket size which record is having the biggest bucket size obviously this record so if I randomly create a number between 0 to 1, what is the highest probability that the values will be going in? Okay. So in this particular case, most of the wrong records will be passed along with the other records. Obviously other records, there are chances that other records will go to the next decision tree. But understand maximum number will go with the wrong records because the bucket is high over here. Right. So the bucket is high over here. So most of the time, this specific record will get selected and then it will be gone to the second tree. I hope everybody is able to understand, right? So this is how this entire things will be going on, guys. Then again, you will probably go ahead and calculate. Again, you will do all those things. Did you get an idea till here or not, guys? Right? Now see what is happening. I will, I will draw this. Till here did you understand this much or not? Now I will give you. Now I will show you what exactly will happen now. Now suppose I have this all records. Okay. So this is my first stump. This is my second stump. This is my third stump. Similarly the third stump. From the second stump whichever wrong records will be going. Maximum number of records will go over here. Then again, it will be trained like this. We'll be having lot of stumps. Minimum hundred decision trees can be added. Okay, you know that every decision tree will give one output for a new test data. New test data. This weak learner will give one output. This weak learner will give one output. This weak learner and this will weak learner will be giving one output. Okay. Obviously, the time complexity will be more. Now from this particular output, suppose it is a binary classification, I will be getting 0, 1, 1, 1. So again over here, majority voting will happen and the output will be 1. In case of regression problem, I will be having a continuous value over here. Okay. And for this, the average, average will be computed and that will give me an output over here. Okay. So for regression, the average will be done. For classification, what will happen? Majority will be happening. So every way that same part will be going on. Okay. Buckets is very much simple guys. Buckets basically means based on this weights, normalized weight, we are going to create bucket so that whichever records has the highest bucket based on this randomly creating code, you know, it will select those specific buckets and put it into random forest. Okay. The next decision tree, sir. They understand why this bucket size is big the other wrong records which are present right suppose they are more than four to five wrong records their bucket size will also be bigger and because based on this randomly creating number between zero to one most of the wrong records will be selected and given to the second stump 
Similarly, this particular decision tree will be doing some mistakes, then that wrong records will get updated, all the weights will get updated and it will be passed to the next decision tree. Okay. Guys, when I say wrong record, the output will be same only, no? 0 and 1. Okay. So interesting everyone. I hope you understood so much of maths in Adaboost and how Adaboost actually work. Three main things. One is total error. One is performance of stump and one is the new sample weight. These things are getting calculated extensively. Everybody clear? I hope you like this session. Till here. So we completed this, this and this. Max normalized weight was basically used because the sum of all these weights are approximately equal to 1. When boosting, why not take the last output? No, no, no. We have to give the importance of every decision tree output. Every decision tree output are important. Okay. Yes, guys, you may have some doubts. Revise. I have added everything what is possible inside this. Okay. I know nothing is simple, you know. Okay, let me talk about one model which is called as black box model versus white box. What is the difference between black box model and white box? If I take an example of linear regression, tell me what kind of model it is. Is, is it a white box model or black box? If I take an example of random forest, is this a white box or black box? If I take an example of decision tree, it is a white box or black box model. If I take an example of ANN, is it a white box or black box model? Tell me guys, this is an interview question. And why probably it is called as a black box model? Black box or white box? Okay, let me say. Linear regression is basically called as a white box model because here you can basically visualize how the theta value is basically changing and how it is coming to a global minima and all those things. In random forest, I will say this as black box model because it is impossible to see all the decision tree, how it is working. So that is the reason the maths is so complex inside us. If I talk about decision tree, this is basically a white box model because in decision tree we know how the split are basically happening with the help of paper and pen you will be able to do it. In the case of ANN, this is a black box model because here you don't know like how many neurons are there, how they are performing and how the weights are getting updated, right? So this is the basic difference between the black box and the uh, uh, white box model, okay? So guys, uh, one more topic is left with respect to XGBoost regression and classification. I'm having a bit of headache, so I'm closing the session now. But you can definitely check this out as an assignment from my YouTube channel, guys. Okay. So from my YouTube channel, I have already discussed about this in depth. So please have a look. Otherwise, if I my headache, I if I was not having headache, I could have completed over here. Okay. Uh, and let's see tomorrow. Uh, probably I will take up all the um, unsupervised machine learning techniques. And probably take one class completely on that and uh, let's see okay so thank you everyone uh, please make sure that subscribe the channel hit like at least make it 500 thank you everybody and yes uh, one session seven day I'll try to show you all practical by taking up all the algorithms and all okay thank you guys have a great day and yes keep on rocking share it in all the platforms like LinkedIn like uh, Twitter, you know, try to share this with many people as you can because this will definitely be helpful for everyone. Thank you guys. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Keep on rocking.